Good morning, and God bless you. We're delighted to have you here with us this morning. Maybe this is your first time um, that you're tuning in and looking at this and checking it out. We trust that you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to start with prayer. Uh, we want to pray for the condition and the direction of our world. We also want to remember our local community and region. We want to remember Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world. Maybe you have a special and spoken request, a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. What a glorious truth has been so freely given unto us. I am so overwhelmingly thank you, thankful for this truth, this revelation, this understanding. Father, we pray for the condition and the direction of our world. We pray for the influence of the Spirit of God, the Word of God, the people of God upon this world. We also pray for our local community and region. We pray that you'll open up doors of utterance and influence. We also pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church, members in particular. Pray that you'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out your divine favor on this people. And lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world. Pray that you furnish them with a hedge of protection. We ask all these things in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody said amen. I'm looking, I'm here in the vestibule um, slash coffee shop area of Cornerstone and the light is coming in, the sun, sunlight is coming in. There's just, it's just an incredible feeling, so much to be thankful for. <clears throat> I want to draw your attention to a infamous passage of scripture found in the book of Mark, chapter number 16, verse number 15, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Simply, I want to talk about mission possible. Mission possible. Of course, this particular passage of scripture is theologically known as the Great Commission. It doesn't actually say that in either Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, Mark chapter number 16, beginning in verse number 15, and then once again in Luke chapter number 24. These are all the harmony of the Gospels um, with very important passage of Scripture that is theologically known as the Great Commission. Jesus is here instructing the 11 and incredible passage of Scripture. I was thinking this morning about just the little bit that I come in contact with about exposure to things that are going on in our world. I do not own a television. I do not watch television. I do not watch movies. I am not um, a follower of anything out of Hollywood. I might see a few things that are on my news app that are relevant and relative to these things. But other than that, I have virtually no exposure and have no desire to have any exposure either to that, um, going beyond that professional sports, even the little bit that I hear or read rather um, on my news app, I don't even know what's going on in Washington DC and all the internal dynamics other than what I have uh, 
in my news sources. But even what I'm exposed to is troubling. It's very, very troubling. I mean, there is absolutely no question that we are coming down the home stretch of human existence in this present world. How do I know that? Um, I am a student of eschatology. I am a student of the word of God. Um, I love these subjects. I love to talk about it. I love to study it. But no man knows the day or the hour, period. But the things that I am seeing and the things that I am feeling about the direction of our world. And when I say world, I'm talking about Western culture and make no mistake about it. Western culture is, is the seedbed of influence throughout the entire world. Everybody follows Western culture, unless you live in a communist country, um, and then that's a whole nother deal. But the United States and Western Europe and maybe a couple other little spots are the centers of influence. Leading the charge of my concern in this world is the absolute bottom has fallen out on common sense. There is pockets of common sense. It is a staple of the generation that is now passing off the scene due to age and influence and what is Generation Z that is coming into play and into influence and into power has no common sense. Um, transgenderism is and the exploitation of our children. For me, uh, theologically, as a theologian and a spiritual practitioner, I am a pastor in my calling, and I would tell you that this is one of, for me, this is one of the truest indicators that we are in the end time because of the indoctrination of children, the, and it's gaining, it's gaining strength all over Western culture. Canada, um, I, just, I just heard yesterday um, where a man was imprisoned. He was arrested and imprisoned because he tried to stop. Uh, he was either separated or divorced. They shared a child. Um, the child's mother wants uh, reassignment surgery and uh, to prepare the child for that, they are exposing this child to now um, blockers that, that block uh, certain aspects biologically, God-given, um, that, that enhance a gender in puberty, and they block that, and now they're preparing the child to give uh, different hormones from, uh, to change the, the boy into a girl, and then lastly, it will be gender reassignment surgery with more chemicals to follow. It is going against the grain of God creating male and female. This is, this is one of Satan's most prominent defined last stands, and it's aimed at children. And it growth, it is growth. It, it goes against my nature. There's a part in me that is, brings out a rage within me, um, a righteous rage, if I could put it that way. And my rebellion to that, my rebellion to what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing and, and the people that are absolute reprobates that have lost their minds 
that are pushing this, that, and it's all linked together. It's all linked with all this, uh, all this stuff in our world that is, that is socially corrupt, and it has the front of seeking social justice, but on the back end of it, it's, it's radical. It is a radical same-sex ideology, and it's, it's unbelievable what is taking place in our world. Okay, let's change gears. My rebellion to all that is it's time to preach the gospel to every creature. Yesterday, we felt very led of the Holy Ghost to talk about the agenda of the gospel. And we had several people baptized. It was, it was a glorious service. The entirety of yesterday's service was a powerful thing. But it dawned on me afresh that every single service, there needs to be a presentation, a clear presentation of the gospel. I want to tell you, if we get too far out in this media thing, I saw this with everything that happened with the Donald Trump presidency and, and that there are people that just... They almost spiritualized where Donald Trump was a biblical figure and some kind of a prophet from God. And they, they over-spiritualized that. And they had dreams and visions and prophecies. That's nonsense. I don't care who the president is. I have a preference. I have a preference of how I'd like to see things go. I, I'm, I'm told uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 2, to pray for those that are in authority. But we have a job to do. We have a mission to carry out, regardless of who is president, regardless of who uh, is in Congress, regardless of what's going on in the corruption of our nation. There are nations all over the world that have... That have absolute uh, chaos uh, in their governments that are fulfilling the Great Commission. We need to get back to the mission that is entirely possible. Why is it possible? Number one, there is nothing in this world that is more powerful than truth. Truth is our calling card. Truth is our message. Number two, the Holy Ghost has been poured out on all Flesh, it's already there. The Spirit of God is already at work. We recently had a missionary um, who, at the end of this month, is taking his family traveling to Jordan and starting a uh, home missions work in the capital city of Jordan. And he gave his testimony in our Saturday men's prayer meeting, and he said that he was absolutely strung out on crack cocaine, he had overdosed on crack cocaine, and he said God spoke to him. He was a backslider, and he said God spoke to him and said, if you don't change, if you don't change, I'm going to leave you this way. My point is, is that the Spirit of God is working on people all over the world. God spoke to me on a, on a concert stage in a, in a heavy metal band in 1983, don't tell me that the Spirit of God is not reaching for people. God spoke to Saul on his way to Damascus. Um, and God spoke to Cornelius before God spoke to Peter. God is reaching for people. Okay, we have the truth. And we have the love of God. Isn't that exciting? We have what everybody is looking for. Don't tell me that you can't love people that are not like you. We, this is 101 stuff. We need to get over ourselves and start realizing that we're talking about human beings that are in gross darkness that need hope. It's time to go pray through, get full of the love of God, and realize that we're in the world but not of the world, but we're here to reach the world. And God is going to help us. We have the truth. The Holy Ghost has been poured out on all flesh. And lastly, angels are working with us. Hebrews chapter number 13, I believe in the verse two verses of Hebrews chapter 13, that you're actually viewing an audit of angels coming into congregations and seeing if they're ready for the revival that God sees in that city. You say, well, I need more Bible for that. Okay, Acts chapter number 17. 
God wakes up Paul in the middle of the night, gives him a vision, said, I have much people in this city. When Paul finally reared back and preached without fear or favor, you can see the collection of humanity that was brought into that revival. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, there were abusers of themselves with mankind. There was effeminate, there was adulterers, fornicators, liars, alcoholics, drug addicts, the, 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 the baser sort of humanity. The angels of God know where those people are. Mission possible. How are we going to get this thing done? If, if, we, if we get overly, overly caught up with how bad the world is, we'll just say we can't do it. We're unprepared for this. What we need to do is go and have a prayer meeting and understand that this is the will of God. Mission possible. It's time for revival. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.